What is up, guys? This is Mario, and you are listening to episode two of the Grown Up Pixels podcast. Thanks for joining me, everyone. If this is your first time listening to the Grown Up Pixels podcast, make sure you go on to iTunes and look us up by the same name, Grown Up Pixels, and uh, you can check out the first episode there. It's more of an introductory episode, so it definitely will give you the layout. It's a perfect place to start. First and foremost, I want to thank absolutely everyone that replied to my community question that I gave out last week. It was, what was your first exposure to video games? I got so many responses that I can't actually read them all on this episode. Otherwise, I'm going to go way beyond what I uh, originally have intended. So I'm just going to read a couple of them. Daniel Tapia says, My dad bought me and my bro an NES for Christmas. Their first games were Mario Brothers, Double Dragon, and Contra. His first arcade game ever played was Street Fighter 1 at a liquor store. Chauncey Latimer the 4th. Zombies ate my neighbors and Super Metroid on the SNES. I watched my dad play them all the time as a child and would pick up the controller and play when he allowed it. It was a lifelong love from there. Cool. Andy Riley says Math Invaders. Dot dot dot. Hey, it was educational. You know what? One of my uh, early experiences with games was actually an educational one too. It was Oregon Trail back in like elementary school. Andrew Castro, Commodore 64, Pirate's Cove was the game, then Atari and Pac-Man. Ricky Merritt says, Alex Kidd on the Master System, the game was built in, from then it was Mega Drive and the SNES took over my childhood. James R. Cook, I would have been maybe four or so when we got a family Christmas present that was the SNES. We each played for about 10 minutes before heading to bed when we awoke the next morning we found our dad playing the last boss on donkey kong he had been playing all night pretty sure it was the first and last time i ever saw him play a video game i thought that was astonishing like to wake up and see your dad beating the game that you just barely got to taste that's cool really cool that's like bragging rights too you know like yeah i beat that game for you guys gaston senna My dad bought a PS1 for himself after hearing a lot of good things, and he got mature games Doom, GTA, some spaceship game, Gran Turismo, but one game he got kind of cover, the violence in case I show up was Spyro the Dragon. Ah. The face I had seeing the colors, the graphics, blew my mind. He ended up letting me play Spyro. Sucks that I didn't have a memory card, but after that, they got me Crash Bandicoot, Warped, and the rest is history. You know what? I always had an issue with memory cards. Always. Up until the Dreamcast. Heck, my first two um, two weeks or first week of the Dreamcast, I actually played the game without a memory card over and over and over and over until I finally got one. Chris Moreno. My stepdad's Atari back when games were a joystick and a button. Most games only had three lives to beat the game and no internet to figure out strategies. Just you and a friend taking turns until the sun came up. That's awesome. Conrad Campbell. Started with a second-hand Atari 2600. Enjoyed it until the video game collapsed. Then got a Nintendo along with The Legend of Zelda the first year they came out on Christmas. Been gaming non-stop since. Jurgen Van Buningen. Sorry if I messed up your name, Jurgen. Probably something I can't remember. My dad was playing games long before I was born. So for me, probably is something like Tomb Raider for PS1, Pokemon Yellow on the OG Game Boy, and later that year, Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo 64. Awesome. Can't go wrong with Zelda or Pokemon. I wasn't that big into Tomb Raider. I played it, it used to give me headaches as a kid. Don't know why. Jay Jorgensen. My first was Christmas 1988-89, so I was about three or four. We got an NES bundle with Mario and Duck Hunt. My dad set it up on a black and white TV. I got killed by the first Goomba way more than I want to admit. The first time I got the Fire Flower, I thought it just helped me jump a little higher. Dude, I was one of those kids with an NES controller that thought I had to pick up, physically pick up the controller in order to jump. Terrence C. Briggs. Dad bought home an Atari VCS in 1980. I think that cut off. 1980. Came with River Raid, my first video game, Combat, Air Sea Battle, Demons to Diamonds, and Pac-Man. 
Dan Biscalia. First one I remember was Duck Hunt. Played with my brother in the basement. I was three, I think, but all that stuff is hazy. He already owned an Atari 400, but I hadn't seen him play at that point. I do know that the first game I actually played was Super Mario Bros. He abbreviates SMB. Followed soon afterwards by Dragon Warrior, which was the first game I beat with my brother's reading assistance, of course. I still vividly remember that feeling of running to town, about to run out of HP. I encountered a monster, attempted to run, failed, the monster missed. I successfully ran and made it to town with a single digit HP to spare. It was probably the first tiny, the first thing Tiny Dan himself experienced that felt in some way like a high. Poor little guy didn't realize how long lasting his video game addiction was about to be. I feel you on that. Mike Levy. My grandfather bought it for me for my birthday when I was six years old. The first games I owned were Mario, Duck Hunt, Zelda, Metroid, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I remember my mom singing along with me to the second level music in TMNT, and my mom would play Mario with me and would yell whenever the Koopa Troopas get too close. I think my mom played Mario maybe once or twice, but yeah, she definitely wasn't, she, you know, bad guys coming or having to jump over something, you know, she'd start to yell. Matt Waller. My earliest memories were trying to beat my dad at Breakout on the old Atari. Other favorites include Pong, Frogger, Pac-Man, and River Raid. It wasn't until my family packed up the NES in 86 that the hooks went in deep. Peter Skirt. This was my first exposure to video games in 1976. I was four years old and cons consistently beat my dad while playing on this Pong clone. It's simple by today's standards, but back then this was way cool. Alex Messenger. I watched my dad play A Link to the Past when I was a lot younger. Key Glyph. My parents bought the NES at our first, as our first family console in 1990. At that time, it was intended mostly for my older brother, who was nine. I was only four, so when my father was trying to explain to me how a magic box was going to be able to change what we saw on the television, madness, with an exclamation mark. Ed Wilson, which is an, uh, the other co-host to Pixel Tunes Radio. 1981, I was three years old. My parents bought my grandfather an Atari 2600 for his birthday, and we all sat and played it together that evening. And just about every other Sunday afterwards, when we went to visit, I actually have a picture of the first time I played it. And that's when he shared a picture on um, their Facebook group of them playing it. It was my first experience with a home console was the god awful port of Pac-Man, but I loved it anyways. Richard Green, Donkey Kong Country and My Town's Pizza Hut. Anthony Pig, my first exposure was at my cousin's house. He had a NES setup with Mario, Super Mario, and the gamepad with stadium events. Eric Wright, I was like six or seven. It was 89.90 and my mom, my sister, and I had just moved into town. We had to go to a laundromat because our apartment didn't have a washer or dryer. One evening while we were there, some guy had a Game Boy in Tetris. I was curious as kids are apt to be. He let me try it and I was immediately entranced. I knew video games existed to some extent, but had never actually played any until that point. It was amazing. I couldn't believe how immediate the response was. I was controlling the thing that was happening on the screen. That Christmas, my mom, correction, Santa, got me an NES for Christmas along with a handful of games. I think the system came with Mario and Duck Hunt, Mario 2 and Tetris. Of course, I loved Mario as soon as I played it, but I was super excited to see Tetris on the big screen with the colors and the new music but still one of my favorite songs from the Game Boy version. Jason Hartley. Mine, like most kids in the 80s, was Atari, but I was lucky enough that my dad liked games, so we started off with computers first being the TRS-80 and then C64 before my mother got us a Nintendo. Jeff Jordan. Weekends at the arcade until a year or two before the SNES came out. Keith Cross. 1988, I was three years old and my older stepsister would play Super Mario Brothers together when she would babysit me. Cool. Thank you again everyone that replied. It means the world that you actually took the time to answer the community question I had sent out. I really was only expecting about two or three responses and I was blown away by everyone that actually took the time. And thank you very much. So my very first exposure to video games 
was, I want to say in 1988. I was about four years old. I lived in these uh, studio apartments and there was a kid that lived a couple apartments behind that happened to get a Nintendo. So me and another kid would go to this guy's house and we would play games. That's where I learned how to play it. This other kid was extremely good at Nintendo. Like he had been playing it for a long time or years before. So if it came out in 88, that means I think uh, the Nintendo with Mario came out in 84, 85. So I was a little later to the game, but I loved it. That was my first exposure. I just, just was horrible at it. I remember being stuck and getting game overs on the very first world. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I would pick up the controller and that's how I thought you had to jump. You had to physically move the controller up or move it over and yeah, so it was something else. But that was my very first exposure to video games and it was a couple Christmases later that I actually got a Nintendo with Mario and it just went on from there. So what am I currently playing? Uh, this past week I finished the Champions Ballad on The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Went ahead and finally finished everything and I got the almighty horse, motorcycle horse, bike pony, whatever you want to call it. Awesome. So I've been going through the map and um, using the hero's path or hero's journey, making sure I get to every single point on the map that I just never explored. Um, so yeah, I'm currently going through that. Starting Bayonetta 1 on the Switch. Just recently picked that up, so I'm definitely looking at starting that. I had played it before. I think it was on the P PlayStation 3. Um, I got far, but I never fully finished it. So Bayonetta 1 on the Switch. And I'm also going through Yakuza 0 on the PlayStation 4. That one's uh, pretty good. It's been a slow grind on that one, but I definitely have enjoyed it as I go through it. I'm on uh, Majima's story right now, just learning more and more and connecting pieces. Prior to that, I played Yakuza Kiwami. Kind of reverse order, but it definitely connects. It makes a lot of sense. That's what I'm currently playing right now. So, time for the news. Um, a lot of things are always coming out on video game world and video game news. Truthfully, there's only a handful of them that actually catch my eye and I actually care about. So some of the things that came out recently as of this recording was the Mega Man Collections 1 and 2 for the Nintendo Switch coming out in May. I didn't catch the price on it, but I am interested. Something about Mega Man on the Switch being portable just feels right. Feels like it belongs there. I know Mega Man Collections 1 and 2 has already come out. On the other systems but I'm still looking forward to getting it on the switch and that it has a rewind feature totally gonna use that Mega Man 1 and 2 I know I'm gonna die like a million times so totally looking forward to that feature I also happen to see an article on uh, Final Fantasy 15 as they're extending a the roadmap even further that game needs to be done already I uh, have a playthrough on my YouTube channel of uh, Final Fantasy 15 I tried to do a second playthrough, I just couldn't. Something about that game, like, looked nice and all that stuff, it was cool, but something just was off. And the last bit of news that stood out to me was Dragon Ball Fighters has some new characters coming. We got Broly and Bardock coming soon to uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. That should be cool. Um, I'm gonna be honest, when that game came out, I was, re I was excited, but a little skeptical. Um, I did play it, go through the training mode, and I like that there's an arcade mode and a story mode because there's already people that are experts at that game that were experts before everyone got the game. So there's no chance I'm going to be competitive online. Um, the new characters should be cool, but they need to fix the online. If you've played online, like I'm trying to play with my buddies in a lobby so we can have continuous play. And that has been almost impossible. And I know there's little workarounds here and there, that's just a problem that should have been fixed a long time ago, you know? Especially nowadays when everyone plays online, you know? this That should be a key component, it needs to be fixed, so they gotta get it together with that. But um, yeah, new characters. And that's it for the news this week. My Pixel memory this week is from Resident Evil 1. So back in the day, I, ha I didn't have a PlayStation 1 when it first came out. 
and a friend of mine let me borrow it for a couple days or a week I don't even remember and what I did was I uh, played Resident Evil I think he had the game and I actually went through the entire Resident Evil game without ever using one of the item boxes and the reason I didn't use an item box is really dumb I actually didn't know how to use it I was able to access it I didn't know you had to put items in there so as a result I went through the entire game now I don't remember the full details I just remember that I went through the full game when I had a, a full inventory I would go and, and have all my items until I can use it like their little rubies and gems and stuff they have to use for doors I would have those items in my inventory and literally just use them and then have a full inventory again and find where they go and use them then I can get healing items and stuff like that so and I don't remember if Resident Evil 1 let you drop items in a certain place and then go back and then pick them up that I don't remember but I do remember it wasn't until maybe Resident Evil 2 and it was a, a friend of mine that uh, I was watching him play he used the save boxes and he was moving his inventory around and I said what that's how you use that and he was amazed that I didn't know how and he said didn't you beat Resident Evil 1 I told him yes I beat it and um, but I never used a, a save box and he was blown away like what I, how could you even beat that game without a save box so uh, I was always told that something like that would have been a ch an achievement in this day and age, like a huge trophy. But uh, anyway, yeah. So that's my pixel memory, uh, beating Resident Evil 1 without using a single storage box. Question to the community. You have to make a choice. You have access to either every single game from the past. So let's say the past being yesterday and further along in the past or you don't have access to those games but starting today you have access to every single game moving forward in the future so basically you can only pick one and this is not related to money or anything you just have access to them games from the past from your past or and all the games from your past even the ones you wanted to play and didn't get to play or um, you skip the past and you only have access to games from the future from this point forward which one would you pick past or future let me know guys all right everyone so this is the end of episode two of the grown-up pixels podcast thank you very much for everyone that joined me listened and is actively participating in the community questions really really appreciate it and your feedback is very much welcome um if you did enjoy the podcast or you didn't please leave me a review let me know the only way i can get better at this show is by you guys's reviews and input definitely helps me out and um i'm working towards it you know i'm changing things and i'm seeing what works and what doesn't you can find the podcast on itunes soundcloud youtube anchor and on facebook on all those platforms, it's at Grown Up Pixels. So you can, on Anchor, you can use the mobile app and just look up Grown Up Pixels. YouTube, Grown Up Pixels YouTube channel. Facebook, Grown Up Pixels Facebook group. And SoundCloud, also by Grown Up Pixels. And uh, leave me reviews, comments. I want to know. I want to hear from you guys. Um, you can also follow uh, Grown Up Pixels on Twitter, at Grown Up Pixels. And I think that's about it. That wraps it up. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.